a lot of great songs. This is what it says. Just live from day to day, and I borrow from its sunshine for its skies may turn to gray. I don't. future for I know what Jesus said and today Getting brighter as these gold, golden stairs I climb. Every burden, oh, getting brighter. Everything, every cloud is silver. There the sun is always shining. There no tear shall dim the eye. At the ending of all the rainbow, where the mountains.
Praise God. I don't know much about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. I know who's holding my hand. Even in the midst of every trial and tribulation that may come my way, I know who's holding my hand. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise here this morning. Many things about tomorrow I may not understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. you Jesus glory to God I know who holds my hand his name is Jesus thank you Jesus thank you singers and musicians man I love that song blesses me every single time many things about tomorrow I may not understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to the, the longest book in the Bible, the book of Psalms. It is the world's first songbook. Everything that we have done this morning, praise and worship and all the specials, it originates from here, the book of Psalms, when David, this is a Psalm of David, Psalm 34, Psalm 34, beginning in verse number one. David would write and say this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And I want to use for a subject ministering just for a few moments here today one word, praise. Praise. It is one of the greatest resources that we believers have, praise. Heavenly Father, we come before you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to praise your name, to worship, to magnify you. Lord, I pray that you would anoint us this morning to minister. We cannot do without the anointing 
of the Holy Spirit. Anoint our ears to hear what you would have us to say. We ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. you know, speaking of music, music is one of the greatest resources that we have as well. There's nothing like music anointed by the Holy Spirit. It will pick you up when you need it, strengthen you when you need it, help you when you need it, give you direction when you need it. And music anointed by the Holy Spirit will do more for you than just about anything else. Well, really, just about anything else the world has to offer. You see, the world, their music cannot compare to the music given by the Holy Spirit. You see, there is a spirit attached to music. If it's done wrong, it will invite demon spirits into the life of an individual. If it's done correctly, it will drive demon spirits away. Music is such an important factor in the Christian walk. You've heard it said any number of times that the book of Psalms, it is the world's, or it is the Bible's, it's the longest book of the Bible, it's the world's first song book. And whenever you read the Psalms, many times it's extolling, praising the name of Jesus, praising the Lord, even in the midst of troubles, even in the midst of difficulties. And I was reading this Psalm the other day, and this just ministered to my heart. It ministered to my life. But the illustration that I want to bring before you here today, it's one of sadness and sorrow. It's one of heartbreak. Just the other day, I finished reading a biography most of you know that when it comes to sports that I am a basketball guy. I love the game of basketball. And I have been fascinated with different individuals throughout my 38 years, almost 39 years of living. I will maintain, in spite of what some people may say, that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. But yet there is one individual that really changed the game more than just about anybody else, and he went to college here at LSU. If you're from Louisiana, you know the name, Pete Maravich. One of the greatest basketball players who ever lived. He did things that were you just couldn't comprehend with the human mind the things that he could do. I remember very vaguely whenever I was about eight years old, nine years old, somewhere right around there. Pete Maravich had came out with VHS tapes called Pete Maravich or Pistol Pete's Basketball Homework. Some of you remember that, don't you? We had a set, and it was actually sent to us by Pistol Pete himself. He sent dad copies of those VHS cassettes. And of course, I looked at them, I watched them, I tried to do the things that he could do, but it was a lot of work that was involved in doing those things. But I remember hearing the story, I believe it came from dad, that he was sitting down to write Pete Maravich a thank you note whenever it came across the radio wires that he had died of a heart attack. Dropped dead at the age of 40 in California. His last words were, I feel great, and then dropped down dead. But as I was reading a biography on his life, it fascinated me, but it went not so much into what he accomplished in his basketball career, but really the heartbreak 
that he had suffered and gone through. Upon coming to Louisiana, his dad, Press Maravich, taking the job at Louisiana State University, which you know is a, is a football school. It is not a basketball school. It is a football school. His wife, Helen, Pete's mother, was the quintessential coach's wife. Knew the game, somebody said, almost just as much as Press because Press Maravich would stay up hour after hour, day after day, scheming, planning, diagramming plays, and he was ahead of his time when it came to his ability and his mind for basketball. But one thing that not a lot of people knew was that Pete's mother, Press's wife, suffered from depression. She would go weeks in this darkened state of depression. She was an alcoholic. They would find liquor bottles everywhere across the house. It was shoved in, in between the, the cracks, the crevices of the couch. They would see and find Vinegar bottles where she had poured out the vinegar and put in alcohol. She was a lovely, beautiful woman, but this thing would get a hold of her. And there would go times that Pete would say, he would just leave out of his house and say, my mom's out of it, I'm gone, I got to get out. The struggle of depression, not knowing what to do, not knowing where to go, so she turned to, towards alcohol to try to drown the pain. Reach out toward that bottle to try to drown away the suffering, the heartache, the struggle. It got so bad that it is said in this biography that Press Maravich became mother and father. They had a granddaughter that they had brought in, pretty much adopted and raised. And Press was the one that would be the mother, the father, the coach, everything that he could be because his wife suffered from depression and was an alcoholic. One day, she got to the point where she couldn't take it any longer. She called up her first son, Ronnie, who was from a previous marriage. And while on the phone with her, her oldest son, Ronnie, talking to him over the phone, she reaches down and grabs a pistol and proceeds to commit suicide. When I read that account, my heart sank because I realized that there are so many people around the world who are in the same condition. So many people around the world that they have no hope. They feel as if there is no hope in life. They had circumstance after circumstance come upon them to the point where they've reached out to a bottle to try to, to try to drown away the pain or a pill to try to numb the pain. I saw a show one night when we were on vacation. I watched it just for a few moments because I couldn't handle it. It was on the streets of Vancouver, British Columbia, and Canada, Skid Row, where all there were scores of drug addicts that were on the streets. They were, watch, they were showing these individuals who were bound by heroin. They were looking for anything to get a fix, and they interviewed one woman, said, I was a wife, a mother of three children. 
But there were things in my life that I, I just couldn't shake. I didn't know what to do, and I tried alcohol, and that worked for a moment. But then I proceeded then to, 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 to go towards marijuana, and that helped for a moment. But I needed something stronger. I needed something stronger. I went toward cocaine, but I needed something stronger, and that's when I found heroin. Let me tell you something, church. I don't care what anybody tells you. The moment that you start with sin, it never stays static. I don't care who you are. I do not care what condition you're in. If you mess around with sin, it'll bite you every single time. Whenever you take that first sip of alcohol, you can sit there and tell yourself and tell others that I'll never go down that route. But the moment you invest in sin, sin will grab a hold of you and it will not let you go. Why do you think there's so many alcoholics? They started out with one drink. As I mentioned this one illustration, that lady that interviewed, she started with alcohol and couldn't drum the pain so much that she needed something stronger. And it just progressed that she was a flat-out heroin addict. Dying on the streets, she said, I would literally see people dying on the streets, needing a fix of heroin. But I also think in my mind, how many Christians are battling depression and oppression as we speak? How many Christians... Are struggling with oppression. Struggling with depression. I know we've dealt with this before, but this was on my heart so much this week that I feel that it's, it's, it's needed in the church world because so many Christians are looking, they're saved, they're spirit-filled, but there's that struggle with depression. They get so dark at times, they don't know what to do. In fact, that word, and I was looking at this, that word in verse 2, humble, one of its definitions is oppression. Oppressed. You see, many Christians, they don't understand that there is a difference between demonic possession and demonic oppression. Oppression comes from without. DRR and, and possession comes from within. Now, do you get that? Possession comes from within. Oppression comes from without. When you think of the word possessed or possession, what do you think? Ownership. If you are a Christian, if you have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, it is literally impossible for you to be demonically possessed. It's impossible. Why do you say that? Because you don't belong to Satan any longer. He doesn't possess your soul any longer. You've been bought with a price. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You've been redeemed. You belong to God. You belong to Jesus. So therefore, Satan cannot possess you. You're not. You don't belong to him. The song says, I belong to Jesus. I'm a child of the king. I've traded these earthly garments for a robe of royalty. Some of you, have you done that? You don't belong to Satan any longer, so therefore he cannot possess you. However, he can oppress you. And every single child of God will go through bouts and will struggle. At least I can tell you from my personal experience with oppression. Where it feels like the weight of the world and Satan, his fiery darts have been penetrating you and piercing you from all sides. To where you feel like you cannot go any further. Understand this. Every attack that is leveled against you by Satan is not so much against you personally, but it's against your faith. Every attack 
that he levels against the child of God is to weaken your faith or to destroy your faith. When you look at the word of God, especially I I look at these two individuals, Judas and Peter. Satan leveled his attacks against Judas and Peter. They both failed. Judas betrayed Christ. Peter denied Christ. They both suffered and they both failed. But the difference is Judas, his faith failed. Whereas Peter, his faith did not fail. They made mistakes. They messed up. But Judas, his faith was gone. He quit believing. It was over for him. And when he messed up, when he betrayed Christ, when it came out, instead of repenting and coming back, he committed suicide. Just like scores, and I'm not knocking this, but scores of individuals are doing the same exact thing. Whereas Peter, he messed up big time. Denied Christ three times. However, Jesus told him, Peter, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. That your faith fail not. That your faith, you see, understand this, and I want you to get this. Every attack against you is leveled at your faith to move you away from the faith of Christ and him crucified. Even this, even after you begin to understand the message of the cross, many have it in my mind, and I was one of those that thought this, that now that I understand this, then that's, it's, it's gravy train from here, man. It's all good. I didn't realize that it was just the beginning. Because now that you found the answer, don't think for one second that Satan's going to walk away from you. But he's going to turn them guns on you more than what you can expect because he knows now you have found the answer. You have found the key to victorious living. Faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified. And if he can move your faith away from that, he's got you. But here's the key. When you fail, not if, when you fail, when you make a mistake, when you get knocked down, don't go the route of Judas and quit and give up. But go the route of Peter. Even though you messed up, you, you, you ask the Lord to forgive you, repent, and get up and keep moving forward. <laughs> Strengthen others. Encourage others. Tell others, I've been there. I've struggled with it. But if God can bring me through, I know he can bring you through too. <laughs> but one of the greatest resources that we have as believers is praise 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 and it for many it's a lost art look at this for a moment verse number one David said I will bless the Lord When? (laughs) Underline that phrase. If you got a pen, underline that phrase at all times. Then he says this. His praise shall... Underline that word continually. Be in my mouth. Oh, I think some of you are starting to get this for a second. We know it is impossible for us to praise him with our lips all the time. But it should not stop from us us praising him in our hearts continually every single day. You see, ladies and gentlemen, too many Christians are too busy complaining over everything and they're they're not doing enough praising. You see, whenever you praise continually, there's no time to complain. Come on now. When you praise him continually... There's no time for you to complain over circumstances and situations. But many Christians complain. How many know somebody who's a Christian who complains every single day? 
I mean, you walk around them, they're complaining that it's bright outside and it's too hot. Six months later, you come around, they're complaining it's too cold. They walk in the church, it's too cold in the church. They come into the church, it's too hot in the church. They come into the church, but I don't like the singers up there. They walk into the church, this color carpet, this maroon, ugh. I wish they'd do something with this carpet. They complain over everything, every time, and nobody wants to be around somebody like that. They wonder why they have nobody that wants to be around them. All they do is complain over everything. When as a believer, you've got no right to complain about anything. You should start praising him because of what God has done for you. Quit complaining about everything and start praising him for everything. Quit complaining about this, that, and the other. Well, I'm not going back to that church because they didn't shake my hand. <laughs> Complain over everything instead of coming to the church. I thank God I can come to a church where I can lift my hands no matter who's around me. I may know nobody or I may know everybody, but it doesn't stop my praise from happening. It doesn't stop my praise from going on. <laughs> so you got a choice. If you are one of those that complain over everything, I strongly encourage you, try the opposite. Because by complaining, you're saying, in essence, God, I don't think you can. You complain, and you're saying, you see, God don't work with complainers. Just go back to the book of Exodus and see a whole book of complainers, murmurers, complainers, where we should have stayed back in Egypt. I'm sick of this angel's food. We got this water that's salty. We've got this, that, and the other. When they should have been thanking God, they would have been dead. But God brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and they're free people. Yes, they may be in a wilderness, and yes, you may be in a wilderness right now. But take that and don't think about it in a negative and say, God, you're doing something in me. You're working in me. I thank you. I thank you for everything you've done. Lord, show me what you're trying to do. When you change the course of a church, from complainers to praisers. Oh, my Lord. Glory to God. When you can change your church from complainers to praisers. That means this. Yeah, the devil's going to come, but he ain't going to stop my praise. He ain't going to stop me from praising him. I can't stop praising the name of Jesus. I can't stop. Quit complaining. Start praising. Let his praise continually be in your mouth, in your heart. Every day, wake up and say, Lord, I thank you that I've got another day. When you lay your, day, your head down at night, Lord, thank you for allowing me to have one more good day with you. Whenever you're in the midst of your trials and tribulations, you can still say thank you. Praise, 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 praise. When you begin to praise, it changes everything. When you begin to praise him, it does change everything. Where, whereas before, you're sitting there with your arms folded, got a scowl on your face, and you complain over everything. The very moment you start praising, your frown is turned upside down. When you start looking back at what God's done for you, when you start looking back to what he's brought you out of, when you start looking back on what he's delivered you from, there's a, there's a change that takes place and a praise that comes from your lips. Somebody said it this way. Joy and happiness are not the same thing. Happiness is an emotion. It can change. Whereas joy is not an emotion. It's a result of where you are in Christ. 
that means that even in the midst of your the worst circumstances that you can go through, you may not be happy, but let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Talking about praise for a moment. I know not every day you feel like it. I know every day you don't feel like praising him. And there are going to be times when that oppression sinks in and wears you down to the point where you feel like you can't go any further. But all it takes, when you're down and out and the devil's hitting you and you're laying down, you're sitting down, you're thinking, I don't know if I can go on. I'm not sure if I can go on any further. I'm not sure if I can even put one foot in front of the other. But all of a sudden, a little spark of faith hits. And one hand goes up. It says, Lord, I know I'm looking up to see bottom. I know I've messed up. I've made a fool of myself. But, Lord, I thank you for your saving grace. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. It starts out with just one hand, and you see it doesn't stop with just that. Because the moment that faith is ignited, and it starts with just one hand, it's contagious. Because the other hand begins to go up some. And says, Lord, I thank you. You know, I'm reminded of the story that my grandfather always tells regarding the vision, the dream that he had. Where that, that horrific demonic beast was standing over him. And all he had was just a whisper, the name Jesus. Come on now. Come on now. All starts with just a whisper. It starts with just a whisper. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Then all of a sudden, a little bit of strength comes up. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Then strength starts to come out. Strength starts to be ignited. And faith starts to go working. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It starts with just a little bit. But if you can just muster up a little bit of faith and just say, Jesus, something begins to happen on the inside of you. Oh, I wish I had some praisers in the house this morning. Something happens. Something happens. Something happens. Something happens. Something happens. Something happens. Woo! I feel a shout of praise this morning. I feel a Holy Ghost shout coming on. Glory! Glory! Hallelujah! I feel a Holy Ghost shout coming on. I feel a Holy Ghost shout coming on. All it takes it's just the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Shake off those heavy bands, lift up those holy hands. When you start out, it may be small, but it turns to a holy Shabbat to where you can't help it, but just shout the praises of Jesus. Glory. Huh. I feel it. Some of you had not shouted in a long time. But something right now is starting to bubble up inside of you. You can't help it. One hand goes up. Then after a little bit, another hand goes up. And then after a minute, you're shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel
feel lost, he's a way maker. If you get freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel it this morning. I feel the presence of God this morning. Some of you start shouting right now. It's what God has done for you. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. My Lord, I feel that. You're saying God can. The very moment you start praising, you're saying God is able. No matter the circumstance, no matter the trial, you're saying God is able to get me through. God is able to lead me out. God's able to lead me out. I know my Lord is going to lead me out. I know my Lord is going to lead me out. We got some praises in church this morning. We got some praises in church this morning. Ah. When you praise, you're boasting in what Christ has done. You're boasting in what Christ has done for you. Do you get that this morning? When you're praising him, you're not boasting in yourself. You're not speaking excessively about yourself, but you're speaking of the one who laid the foundations of the world. You're speaking of the one who's able to do it. My Lord, I think I, I can't shake it. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or changing or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. Hallelujah. Worship him. Lift your voices to him, saints of God. Praise him. Praise him. Start praising him. Start praising him. Start praising him. Glory to God. Just slip up your hands right now all across this children's church. Come on, sing it right now if you can. Hallelujah. Come on right now. It's time to thank him. Time to rejoice. He's a You feel He's a way you need He's a Whatever you need, he's here this morning. Come on around this front right now. Yes, he is. Whatever you need, it's here. Same 
Jesus that's here is right where you are. Start lifting your voices and start praising him. Start rejoicing. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on one more time. Yes, he is. He's a pain taker. You feel all. You feel all. He's a way. in the house this morning. It's time to believe it right now. Do you believe it? Then receive it this morning. I testify right now. Glory to God. I think some of you got your shout back. Some of you got your shout yes, back. Yes, yes. You got your praise back. You got your praise back. You got your shout back. You need to go out of this place this morning shouting the praises of God. Say he's going to come, but that doesn't have to hinder your praise. You can still praise the Lord in the midst of your trial and tribulation. Don't miss the service tonight and then directly after the service. 8.30 p.m. on SBN. Stay tuned for Dad's program season two of Story Behind the Song. You're going to get more than what you just got here. I promise you that. So stay tuned for that. Tell your neighbor you love him and tell your neighbor I'm praising him through the storm. God bless you. We'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock p.m. Now let's... Praise the Lord.